According to my parents, raising children in the country, all cities were bad. My foods are not good for me. They're evil. They taste funny and they have crap in them. But no, <laughs> that doesn't happen because it's a family function and why would anything go as planned? Most of my time is really good because I spend a lot of it reading and having good cups of coffee. Hello, and welcome to the far away nearby. It's spring, or coming up to it. We were supposed to have snow last night in my part of the country, but we didn't. So, I guess this is an indication that it's spring. It's a little cool out, but how is it in your area, DJ? Hello, Sue. Well, it's uh, interesting you should say that, because just the other day, I was converting an old videotape, an old home movie, and the same thing happened all those years ago. It was probably about 10 years ago. And the narration that went on in the video was, we waited all winter long for a snowstorm. And then fi- spring hit and we finally got it. <laughs> so we actually got maybe an inch or two in the last couple of days. It's not consistent. It's just been light flurry. So it doesn't really stick. But on my way home from the grocery store, I had to brush off my car each time I stopped because that inch or so had accumulated on my windshield. Okay, so it's not quite spring, but it's getting close to it. So, But before we talk about that, let's go talk about our weeks. How was your week? All right, Sue. Well, a few things have been going on around our house. Of course, uh, I've been giving you updates on how our dieting efforts have been going and we are continuing to make progress. Um, Essentially, basically the essence of our dieting is to eat high protein and low carb. And the um, majority of that is to prioritize not snacking. So you eat every two hours so that you're just hungry when you're quote unquote supposed to be so in a way you're training your body and you're training yourself to recognize when you're actually hungry versus oh i just want to gnaw on a cookie (laughs) or you know i want some potato chips just because they're there and it's interesting to learn those signs i mean it's something that i would imagine a child is supposed to learn as they grow up, you know, when dinner time is and to eat your vegetables and all that sort of thing. But, you know, you, you're not eating until you're full. You're you're eating to the point of gluttony. I, I've always been the sort that would have a snack around, especially when I would be watching cartoons or playing video games. That, of course, is the Freud version of that reality. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but so I've, I've learned to eat what I bring with me to work. Uh, My husband has been very kind in exchange for, you know, being his partner in life, being the partner in this diet, because it's always easier when you've got a buddy to go along with it. Mm -hmm. Um, He'll pack my lunch bag with all the things I'm supposed to have during the day. And most days I'm pretty good about just sticking to what's in my lunch. Um, if I do get something out of the vending machine, it's usually something I already have in my lunch bag. Like I will get, strangely enough, pork rinds. Those are healthy for you. It's just the salt content that's bad for you. They are high in protein. Aren't they, um, aren't they cooked in grease? Yes, uh, but depending on how they're cooked, it will lower the salt. So you can get baked por- uh, pork rinds oh, okay. and they're lower. Um, also, a jerky, of course, that's just dried yeah. meat, so it's higher in protein. But I'm down by 10 pounds, and Yay. I've been told that once I hit a certain mark, we're going to celebrate with an ice cream cake. Okay, that seems... Are you going to have other people there? Or is it just going um, to be the two of you? It's just our celebration. <laughs> you know, we're going to make that ice cream cake last. So the, the high point of my week was that I've lost 10 pounds. Um, and the low point was I had to get my car worked on. Ooh, um, that's a real but, bummer. But it's kind of a high point in a way because I've gotten it done now. 
That's and that's a good thing. <laughs> Basically, found out that the mechanic that I thought I liked because he was right here in our little town, mm-hmm. was maybe five ten minutes from the house. He had Saturday hours during the wintry months. So yeah. I could go on my day off to get my oil changed. And then across the street directly was a Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> That's a bad thing. <laughs> it is. Now with the diet, especially. Now, mm-hmm. I can, if I were to continue going to that guy, I basically only had the option of going and having coffee because there's essentially nothing on the menu at Dunkin' Donuts that somebody who's dieting can eat. I'm pretty sure that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I was thrilled to have the mechanic so close to home. It was very convenient to, you know, just drop my car off and walk over and have breakfast. But this last time that I took my car in, it was just for an oil change. And I said, oh, you know, by the way, could you look at my horn? What else? So oh, my, you know, my, my uh, coolant light won't turn off. You know, or it keeps coming on coming on. And mm-hmm. you know, after I dropped the car off and he called me, he's like, you know, I wouldn't bother with the oil change. If I were you, there's a few things that need to be done. Now this goober, and I will start I will call him <laughs> now because my husband took my car to his mechanic who is not necessarily conveniently located. He's uh probably half an hour from our house mm-hmm. out in the country. And there's no cell signal there because he is in an old farmer's barn that's metal. And (laughs) he doesn't give out the Wi-Fi password because his employees will be on the Internet instead of doing their work. Aside from the repairs that I was told that I needed, uh, the goober mechanic didn't bother to tell me when he was checking things out that the reason why I've been having to put air in that tire was because I drove over a nail. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now, and he could have offered to patch the tire mm-hmm. and you know, lower my bill and let me get by for a little while until I have to do the next repair. But no, he just flat out told me you need two new front tires. Okay. He didn't say you've got a nail in this one. He just <laughs> said you need two new front tires. So my middle of nowhere mechanic, mm-hmm. uh, you know, at least leveled with me and said, you know, uh, you do need two new front tires, but I realize you're going to get rid of this car in a few months so there's no point in you buying new tires if i can just patch this heel you know put it put yeah. some heel it and you'll get by until then so naturally just from that my mechanic bill ended up being at least a couple of hundred dollars less yes so yes. sue how have you been what have you been up to well i have not been doing anything very exciting i did start uh physical therapy on my left wrist or hand or thumb or something two weeks ago. Maybe it was three weeks ago. But so far, all she has really done is when I go in, and I'm only doing this once a week, is to put a hot pack on my hand and and, and thumb. She sort of wraps it around my hand and lets it sit there for 10, 15 minutes. And then she comes over and she takes that off, and she takes the brace off of my hand, and then she sort of massages it, <laughs> which is the weirdest physical therapy I've ever had in my life. But uh, the, now, last week or this week, the beginning of this week when I went in, she did start uh, manipulating it more, making the thumb move and back and forth so that it doesn't get – but I know that I'm using it way too much, and, and I don't know if it's if it's healing or not. They haven't taken x-rays of it recently. Uh, the last x-rays they took of it was when they took the cast off and the, bone, and the pins out of the bone, or, or <laughs> the, the pins out of my hand. I think they went through the bones. I'm not real sure. <clears throat> and I didn't understand this when I talked to the doctor, but the physical therapist was saying, well, they actually took a piece of bone out of your hand oh. to make room for, for some of that stuff besides scraping off the growing calcium and stuff that causes arthritis. And, and I'm going, oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently it's it's trying to, that the reason that they're trying to be so gentle with this is that the bone is healing. 
it's not just the muscle which apparently heals faster and easier but the bone itself is healing where they cut that off or took it out or i i know for those for those keeping score how long ago was your surgery it was in oh god it's been like seven weeks i think so a little over a couple months yeah okay it is it's hard for me to remember it was some so time ago <laughs> that's okay so in theory you're halfway down the you're halfway down the road to recovery this is this is true uh although i am doing more th- like i say i'm doing more things than i ought to because the duke is not as good about picking up the, the things like uh washing dishes and and folding laundry he will do laundry for me but it it stays in the baskets and doesn't get folded. So I can sympathize. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I've been doing a lot of, um, I've been folding a lot of laundry when I have to do laundry. I can, since we have to go to the basement, leave the apartment, go to the basement. I, I can only take one, about one load down at this point because that's the only thing I have that will roll that I can roll with one hand. Mm -hmm. Um, And I do try to not use my left hand. It's just really hard. Um, I do do dishes because (laughs) for some reason I can't really use uh, paper plates always uh, since I like to eat soup and other things that are kind of, running in consistency paper plates are not very good for that uh <laughs> when the duke went out and got um uh, paper dishes and plastic silverware type things it would have been nice if he'd gotten some bowls to go with it but he did not do that so so when i want to have <laughs> when i want to have dinner <laughs> which i usually eat soup is uh i need oh, to yeah. You're not a fan of cup of soup? <laughs> I am not really a fan of cup of soup. Uh, but I do I do sometimes eat my soup out of a cup. Uh, but then it has to it, but then it has to be washed as opposed to rinsed out and put in recycling. Especially more recently. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh, yes, it's uh, yeah, I I I don't know, but that's my week has been pretty good. Yeah, we didn't have to take anything to the mechanic shop. I don't think. No, that was that was a month ago or so. Well, I guess I didn't really have a, a high point except that we're getting further along with my wrist, and I and I think it's hurting less. I am taking mm-hmm. fewer of the pain pills that were left over from the knees and the shoulders. Um. But I have avoided taking any of the pain pills that have both hydrocodone and Tylenol in them because those are the ones that seem to make me goofy. Ah. Now, the rest doctor gave me some of those as well as some just hydrocodone ones, I think. But I would pr- mm. rather take just plain Tylenol or aspirin or something rather than taking the Tylenol with hydrocodone because although hydrocodone works really good for me, you Mm -hmm. mix it with Tylenol and it makes me goofy. And that's what sent me to the hospital where Uh I was for two weeks a while back. You recall. Uh So I don't want to do that. So now we're going, we are going to talk about spring and getting ready for spring because when I was a child and even as an adult, people talked about, oh, it's, it's time to do spring cleaning. We need to get ready for spring. Now, my mother never did spring cleaning. And getting ready for spring meant we went out to the backyard and dug up the backyard <laughs> and planted a garden. Um, but various people seem to do various things regarding spring. So I thought we might chat a little bit about spring. So what kind of things does your family do for spring or did they do? You know, my grandmother grew up on a farm in rural Pennsylvania. Mother loved to garden like her mom. So she uh, had my dad set up 
a an area with some beds and fenced it in so the critters wouldn't get in. And one thing in later years my mom planted were strawberries. Mm-hmm. And I guess that's something that uh, takes a while to get started. Yeah. You know, that that was something that she got from her mom was uh, enjoying being in nature and gardening and growing things and having that being her her downtime, the time that she can relax. I want to do window boxes and I want to plant my mom and my grandmother's favorite flowers. I'm not sure that they necessarily go together per se, because I haven't done the looking up of, you know, who plays well with others. <laughs> yeah. I know that I definitely want to plant irises because those were my mother's college flower. That's something very special to me because, as I've mentioned, I've had a very strong and positive female influence mm-hmm. in growing up. And part of that, um, we'll talk about the next time we meet because I saw a wonderful movie that you saw also uh earlier yes. today, hidden figures but uh you know i think it's important to celebrate the people who were important in our lives so i think that me having my mom's college flower in the front of my house would make that statement and i also want to plant my grandmother's favorite flowers which there were many of but uh i remember vividly that she would have like uh, she would have petunias and pansies and she had these, she had moved to a smaller house in their later years. So they didn't have, you know, the, the huge field that they used to, but she had had my grandfather buy these barrels and they are the kind that are cut so that it's just like a, a planter, but they were right. once barrels Yeah, and she those in her yard and they would have her pata- petunias and her pansies. Mm-hmm. And my grand, my mom and my aunt, uh, would take turns every few years for Mother's Day. Would they would buy her a rose bush? So mm-hmm. I know that I also have to get roses to celebrate the women in my family, and they has to be out in my front yard. Was your mother interested in the uh, activities of the spring? Did she do planting? Did she have well? As long as my father was was alive, we had a garden in the backyard, a very large garden, vegetable garden mostly. My mother also loved plants, flowers, so we Mm -hmm. did, she had a pretty uh, (coughs) good-sized garden of of irises, which I think Uh were her favorite flower, and we planted other things from time to time, and those children were encouraged to to help with the garden and to plant other things. My sister... My oldest sister decided she wanted to grow sunflowers. Oh. And so for years, we had sunflowers that grew in, in the, <laughs> around the yard because, of course, sunflowers, you plant them and they grow tall if they are kind of taken care of. You don't have to take too much care of sunflowers, water them occasionally, and and leave them alone and they will grow. If you drive through Kansas, you can tell that because they have a lot of sunflowers down there. Right. <laughs> uh, they're grown for feed and also, of course, for snacks for humanoids. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Very so you were saying that, you know, your members, the members of your family got involved with doing the garden. Was that something that you did regularly? Like, would you go out and pick the vegetables for the evening dinner? Oh, yeah, that was, and my mother canned a lot. My mother did what she could to to make sure that, uh, well, the whole family did. My brother went out and hunt, hunted, and we, the meat we had for winter was frozen and kept in a locker uptown. Uh-huh. Uh, and mother canned fruits and vegetables, and we had a lot of them. Uh, just, we had trees, uh, cherry trees, apple trees, peach trees, plum trees on the property that were giving off fruit. Oh, and a, and a raspberry bush circle. Wonderful. And, and asparagus that grew up. All those things were going to happen no matter what. Right. Uh, and then we planted corn and tomatoes and cucumbers and 
uh, you know, the general, we did not plant squash. I don't know if mother didn't like it, if it just wasn't popular at the time or, or what, but, but right. we, and we didn't plant potatoes, but we usually got potatoes from my uncle Tyne and aunt and, and his wife that my mother's sister that they lived in, in Nebraska about halfway between them. Uh, Be careful about the rose bushes. Yes. We had rose bushes in the front yard of the house my parents owned. Mm-hmm. Now, my brother bought this house for my mother when uh, I was like 14 or 15, and he destroyed everything. He cut down all the trees, and and he dug up all the bushes, the raspberry bushes, and, and he dug up all the roses, which was okay. Uh, because these were roses that tend to propagate by they they send out roots and they grow another rose and they send and they do that this a lot, mm-hmm. uh, not quite as fast as say bindweed if you've ever heard of that. But uh, there are some there's some evil, but, but in some ways they, these roses are like weeds because they just and you never know where they're going to show up. They eventually will start showing up in other parts of your yard. So. You might want to be, and these are probably more wild roses. Uh-huh. I don't know where my folks got them or if they were there when they got the yard. They they brought the property and they moved the house from somewhere else. Mm-hmm. So I don't know where the house, I don't know where either of these things were, but, but uh, and obviously they had owned the house for a lot longer than, than she, they, they, but all the kids were little. I don't. I think they owned this house before World War II, actually. But anyway. Right. Well, I learned something about roses that was interesting to me. And it might actually help me start a garden on a budget, shall I say. While it's been several years since mom passed on and our stepdad has since remarried, he still has many of the the plants that mom planted I, I'm sure that it wouldn't be difficult for me to get permission to get cuttings of her roses. And yes. I uh, I read somewhere that a great way to start a new uh, rose, much like taking a cutting of a of an office plant that a friend might have yeah. at work, is to take a a blossom of a rose, you know, mm-hmm. of course, with some of the stem, and then you insert it into a potato. And then you place that potato in the ground. So it's almost like you have a a flower with a bulb to start it. And so the rose will gather the nutrients from the potato and it gives it a support because it's fibrous and it's strong. Mm -hmm. And it will allow the rose to grow roots through the potato and eventually into the ground to form its own plant. I'll probably just do a can full of cuttings and bring them home. I grew up with allergies, so, uh, <laughs> you know, the, the I guess maybe that would be part of the reason why I enjoy the fall and the winter so much, because mm-hmm. I'm not always sneezing because of the pollen or because of the fresh cut grass, but I think that what I enjoy most about this time of year is that what people wear and what you see on advertisements and things always tends to reflect that season and the mentality. So Mm -hmm. now we're moving away from the browns and the blues and the grays, and we're going into more of the pinks and the oranges and the yellows and the greens, you know, things that they start bringing out around St. Patrick's day and going into Easter. And, and, and and you no longer on commercials and, and on the street, you no longer wonder if the person the, or, or the thing that's moving in front of you is an actual person. <laughs> right. and, <laughs> because, um, they, they, because in spring and summer clothes, they actually look like people as opposed to the, uh, to the heavy bundles. <laughs> exactly. And so Sue, what are you looking forward to most about the season? Spring is nice because it smells, it smells like fall. I grew up in Colorado and for some reason, and the next state over, it smells like fall in the spring, and it smells like spring in the fall. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also not as hot here 
I mean, it's warm. When I first moved here when I was in high school, because my mother came back to take care of her mother, who was an invalid, it was so terribly cold in the winter, and it was so terribly hot in the summer. I mean, it just, it seemed like you were in Texas or down by the uh, equator or something in the middle of the, in the, in the middle of summer. Uh Uh-huh. And I and I and since this is part of the country that the pilgrims wa- or the pilgrims the pioneers walked across, and some of them s- happened to settle here. This is the state of Willa Cather and Best Street or Aldrich and some people like that mm-hmm. uh, that you may have read books about. I don't understand why anybody would have settled in this country, whether it was, I mean, they must have just been so tired that they stopped. So you said that uh, spring smells like fall and fall smells like spring. What about the sight sounds and smells that you associate with spring? Those are all, those are all normal. I I mean, you know, the, the birds start chirping and building nests. And since I live in an apartment, I, they build nests right outside my windows. I, we have had and we have lived in apartments where where they actually raise raise babies in the nest sometimes oh. uh, some apartments not so much but yeah. it it depends and and I live on the fourth floor so I'm like level to that where birds like to be mm-hmm. so well, so that's really cool and of course then you start hearing lawnmowers kind of early in the morning if right. you, don't get up by eight o'clock you start hearing lawnmowers like at nine o'clock and and i realize that most people don't think nine o'clock is really early but if you stay up till three in the morning nine o'clock is really early and in your defense the duke goes to the motorcade later in the day it's true he 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 works he starts work at three you know it's going to be a challenge this year because we're going into the first of the high holy candy holidays. Um, oh, yeah. When yeah. <laughs> when I worked at a hotel, I had a coworker who was from Japan, mm-hmm. and since she grew up in a different culture. She hadn't been ex- uh, exposed to the candy holidays, as I like to call them. So <laughs> it's interesting how these candy holidays are all pretty much American creations. When Easter was coming around at this hotel I worked at, I mentioned that I was looking forward to all the candies that are coming out. And my coworker hadn't heard of these things. So I said, I cannot believe it. I am going to have to introduce you to Easter candy. And I decided on my lunch that day that I was going to go across the street to the convenience store. And I was going to get my Japanese coworker her first Cadbury egg. Mm-hmm. And- this was this was a sacred experience to a junk food junkie. So I went over to the convenience store and I went to look for what I thought to be the one and only Cadbury cream egg. Well, little to my knowledge, they'd come out with others. <laughs> yeah, I think they have like six, there's, eight. There's chocolate at least, and there's caramel. So I went across the street. And I went to find a Cadbury egg for my coworker, and they didn't have any of the originals that I had loved as a child. And I thought it was sacrilege that what I was looking for had been replaced by something <laughs> that looked the same. But when you bit into it, it wasn't the wonderful, fluffy, sugary texture of the original. It was chocolate <laughs> or it was caramel. But either way, it was vile to me. <laughs> See, do you have a favorite memory of spring? Not really. I, I I mean more of summer because because or the early part of summer. In the early part of summer when the peas got got ripe and ready. Mm-hmm. We I I used to when I was small, six, seven years old, my dad and I used to go out and pick to pick stuff for for to eat and of course early peas were really were exciting. Both of my parents loved them and and but Dad would go out and he'd pull them off of the thing and he'd and he'd open them and start eating them and, and then he hand he hand you a handful of peas and say here eat these these are really good <laughs> and you're going they're cooked <laughs> you know 
But he ate a lot of garden produce just raw. He'd, he'd pull up onions and he'd, he'd take the first layer of outer skin off of them and just bite into them. Mm -hmm. uh, and he he brush he'd brush the the uh, dirt off of radishes and take out his pocket knife and cut the root and the top off and just eat those and they still had and it looked to me like they still had dirt on them. I was just I was appalled at my father, but um, I learned to like things. I, I I eat radishes now because my father did. I mm -hmm. still don't eat green onions raw uh, very often. I did when I was a child because my mother very generously would slice very in very small slices pieces of green onions on top of, of potatoes. She'd mash up the potatoes, put butter on it, and then mom would slice onions on it and a little mm -hmm. salt and pepper. It's the most wonderful food you could ever have. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't cut onions that thin. <laughs> <laughs> and so I don't do that very often, but my mother wasn't a great cook, but she had an interesting way of fixing food at the table that always made it taste wonderful. Oh, Do you have favorite memories of spring? Well, I think that my favorite memories of spring were Easter. And, and the that chocolates. <laughs> right. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. My parents had an interesting tradition when we were kids. We would all have Easter baskets. And every year we would get something different with our basket as a little keepsake. And in my case, it used to be little figurines that would be, of course, for spring or Easter. It would be, yeah. you know, a bunny or a little basket or something. But I yeah. think that the other thing besides the candy, of course that was my favorite about spring was that I knew that was the time of the year that my grandparents were going to be coming home because mm. uh, I never grew up having my grandparents around during the winter. So uh, Easter was a very happy time for me because I knew that grandma and grandpa were going to be coming home from Florida. So that meant that from there on, it was back to Sunday dinners at grandma's after church. <laughs> well, that sounds fun. Yeah. Was grandma a good cook? To this day, my uncle still looks back fondly on the pot roasts that she used to make. Did she ever write the recipes down? Did any or any of their, her children? Um, my, my mother has a uh, box of recipes that were written down on like three by five cards. Mm-hmm. My sisters have them, and you know there there are a number of those that are my grandmother's recipes in there. So we we did manage to keep some of them. Yeah, you should so. gather those up, put them in a book, and and put them together for your for your nieces and nephews. And, well, and I, I or any potential children that come into your home. I, I was an inadvertent victim of sexism uh, a few years back. <laughs> I, I learned that my aunt Gwen. The wonderful person that she is put together a recipe book for my sisters with those recipes from mom and grandma. And when I heard that she had done this, I said, of course, you know, well, where's mine? <laughs> if you could live in a warmer climate, do you think you would? You know, Sue, I've lived in a number of different places that were warmer. I, I'm currently a resident of Western New York State where I grew up. But I've spent time in Texas and in Southern California. And, of course, these are places that don't have the same type of seasons that we do in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, and I, I realize that the Northern Hemisphere is all of North America. But when I, when I say that, <laughs> I mean Northern states. So that Northern states would be better, yeah. <laughs> right. So uh, it, it, while I've enjoyed time in Southern climates before, I think it's because I grew up in the northern states that I feel I would miss having different seasons like, the, the you know, the temperature changes and the weather changes. I've said to a few people that if I wanted the same weather year round, I would move to a holodeck. Not that they exist, but <laughs> I've told myself that someday I want to uh, either retire to Denver or to Ireland, depending on what my budget is at the point at the time. Yeah. <laughs> so what about you, Sue? Uh, would you live somewhere else if you could? I would live somewhere else if I could. 
I am one of those famous people who have said on a number of occasions, if so-and-so is elected, I'm leaving the country. Mm -hmm. Or have thought that because of some particular behavior that the highest office in our land as the person holding that has done, I have thought about not living here. And I think maybe... Maybe a better question would be if is if money was no object and you could live anywhere, would, would you stay where Belize? <laughs> you would move to Belize. Yes, or or Canada, but I, I I'm thinking Canada doesn't really want me. I think Belize they might take me. Well, and Belize might be more agreeable for some of your ailments. Well, it's true. Although sometimes heat is more painful than than cold, hmm. and of course it is by the ocean it is sometimes almost non-existent because of hurricanes <laughs> it it has had its share, share fair share of of it incidents its capital was moved from i think its capital used to be Bo, bomopan but is now belize city mm-hmm. or maybe this is the other way around because they moved it inland but yeah. they don't have very far inland to move it so <laughs> Not sure how much that helped it. It it got wiped out with a a hurricane at one time. You know, whenever I think of moving to a warmer climate, I'm reminded of a scene from this wonderful movie with Jessica Tandy. The movie was called Batteries Not Included. Imagine that. I remember a title. Yeah, that's wonderful. And there's a scene in the movie where they're enjoying a cocktail. Mm -hmm. And, of course, Jessica Tandy was an older woman, so she played them often. And she has this moment where she's drinking this beverage and she says you know what they do the, with those little paper umbrellas they put them on there so that when it rains it doesn't thin out the liquor <laughs> <laughs> and it is time for us to go now next next episode in two weeks we will have our we will be live again on pride48.com 5 p.m eastern time we will be discussing the movie hidden figures you should all go out and see it. You will love it. You will cry. You will be embarrassed. Uh, at least I was embarrassed. I, I can't believe that white people treated people of color the way that those women, who were brilliant women and were just incredible women, were treated. That being said, you will love the movie. So you might want to see that before we discuss it. Thank you for listening to The Far Away Nearby. Visit our webpage at tfnpodcast.com. Find our fan page on Facebook and our companion blog on Tumblr. This show is available on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher Radio. Email us at tfnpodcast at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter at tfndj. And call or text us at 720-230-6919. This show is a member of the Pride 48 Network. Find other shows at pride48.com. 